Joining me now to discuss this is Richard Herman, a criminal defense attorney. All right, good to see you, um, Richard, joining us from Las Vegas. So, uh, can the federal government just simply say we are not, we're going to deny funding because you are not, you know, in compliance on this end extension of the law? Well, Fred, they don't have the unilateral authority to make that ultimate determination of whether or not the law has been violated or not. That's going to have to be determined either in Congress or adjudicated in court. And that's probably where this is going to end up, whether it's constitutional and whether there are violations. But as we go on this magical mystery tour of the Trump presidency, we now turn to sanctuary cities. So the issue that you discussed earlier, this is what happens. Local law enforcement make an arrest. When they arrest someone, they take their fingerprints. Mm -hmm. Those prints are put into a, a database, an FBI database. ICE can then see that and make a determination whether or not this person is here legally or not. And then ICE can contact the local authorities and say, detain that person, hold them. And the local authorities are saying, no, we don't have funding, we don't have the facilities, we don't have the ability to just hold all these people. So they're letting them go. Is that a violation of the law? Not necessarily. However, if ICE reaches out and asks these local law officials, give me information about that person, and that information is withheld, or the local law enforcement is directed not to provide that information, that might be a violation. Mm. But that's not generally know. what is being done, correct? Isn't the argument by most cities is that it's an issue of, you know, prison overcrowding, or they don't have the resources in which to hold on to someone, as opposed to refusing to share information? Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's, that's the excuse mm -hmm. for not detaining them. But, you know, three cities have brought litigation already, and it's like a piece of fruit, a banana. If it's not ripe, the courts won't hear it, and that's what's going on. The courts are saying Seattle brought litigation, San Francisco, wait, they haven't withheld funding yet, so mm -hmm. it's not ripe to bring it before us. But like the Trump administration does, they make up facts that are just not true. Like when they say New York City is soft on crime, that's why you need this to be enforced in New York. It's ridiculous. I mean, New York, the crime rates are going down. The crime is not related to any sort of illegal aliens or anything like that. Yet, you hear the Trump boast and brag and make up these crazy stories. And it was Jeff Sessions, Fred, if you remember, at his confirmation hearing, sitting there before the committee saying, it's not right to criticize local law enforcement. Don't do that. And that's exactly what he's doing. The hypocrisy is just, it's its overflowing. It's just incredible so, here. At least two uh, city mayors are disputing the Trump administration. The Justice Department's move on this. Uh, already Mitch Landrieu of New Orleans, Chicago's Rahm Emanuel. Landrieu saying this, quote, if anybody in the Trump administration would actually do some research before firing off letters, right. they would see that the city of New Orleans has already provided the Department of Justice documentation that shows we are in compliance with federal immigration laws. And then Mayor Emanuel uh, saying this quote we've seen the letter from DOJ neither the facts nor the law are on their side regardless let me be clear Chicago's values and Chicago's future are not for sale do, do you see this potentially as uh, Supreme Court cases if these cities decide to um, take the Justice Department to task on this I don't know if it'll make it to the Supreme Court Fred but I you know certainly um, Congress is going to have an investigation here and have to look into it. Some courts will have to look into it. it, it you know, Fred, ultimately it might get to the Supreme Court. I don't know an interpretation of the constitutionality of the statute and the law. I, I, I don't know. It's a slippery slope. It's not a black and white interpretation of the law, whether you continue to detain someone or you let them go. That's not, it may not be a direct violation of the law and certainly Attorney General Sessions and the Trump administration, they don't have the inherent authority to make that ultimate adjudication whether or not the law has been violated. All of these cities, Fred, will comply with a letter, a written letter saying by June 30th, yes, we're in compliance, and we believe compliance is as follows. So they'll send that in, and that should be enough to... Uh, uh, set the stage for litigation because that's what's coming here. All right, Richard Herman uh, flying solo today. Our other partner, Avery Freeman, trying really it's hard okay. to see with like us today, but holding it down. Thanks so much, Richard. Appreciate it. You miss him. All right, Thank coming you, up.